Magen Yugi Nug Jam Thang Ema Gesar Dung Pula Yatsan Chogi Adrune Ema Jone Shishe Sumjak Kodu Kandro Mambekor Jin <laughs> Emajun <laughs> Emma <laughs> Guru Bema Sete Hon Oe Kunzan Dorsen Garajurese Bema Karaje Bane Shunga Sozo Nunya Tetin Gyatzaso Kate Lama Nanda Sovate Jason <laughs> Ransom Chugung is Utun Zepe, Tsawe Lame Shabla Solan David, Tazon Dove Lamna Chula Nguru. Ah, Tashi Dilek. Hello and good evening for everyone. Um, so I suppose to speak a little bit about the Guru Rinpoche today. <laughs> kind of life history of Guru Rinpoche. So I think good to speak from these seven line prayers. <laughs> ah. So everything is similar, like before receiving teaching, what kind of motivation or attitude we need to generate in the conduct during the listening of Dharma or contemplating or practicing is a similar. 
what is we get in the sutras, tantras, and instructions from different masters all should be applied similar way. Uh, so I'm happy to come here, KPC, and speak a little bit about Guru Rinpoche. I think this is my fourth time here. Uh, first time I came to see Holiness, he was giving empowerment here. And then second time, Kenjin Pema Sharab Rinpoche came and taught here. So I was translating there, and third time, Muksang Kuchin Rinpoche was here, and he asked me to come. We made chalk offerings, and then I talked one time with Anilas or Lamas here. So this is fourth time. And Jechen Ma, when she came to Namtling, I uh, saw her there. We were offering kata to her. And um, the third time when I came here, then we went to see her in her place with Moksan Kuchin Rinpoche. So this is KPC, like founded by Jechen Ma and Holiness blazed many times here. So it is quite fortunate to come here and speak a few words. Um, Guru Rinpoche, especially in Nyingma school, we say uh, Sutras Buddha Shakyamuni Buddha and Tantras Buddha is our Guru Rinpoche. Uh, in Tibetan, we say Urjen Sangye Nipa, second Buddha of Guru Rinpoche. And these are uh, based on seven line prayers. It has many different ways to explaining, like Amepam Rinpoche composed commentary on this uh, Namshe Pemakarpu, the commentary of the White Lotus which explains different way, you know, like outer way, inner way, and Dzogchen way. But some Nyingma explains uh, with the five perfections, you know, seven line prayers, like uh, first five lines explain the life story of Guru uh, the perfection of the place, time, um, teachings and uh, uh, teacher and red new so five perfection you know through that explaining the Guru Mucha's life story in the last two lines like so that's the real prayer mm. So I think this is good to use, <laughs> like a root text. <laughs> I think we all Nyingma followers, everyone chanting seven line prayers. Huh? Uh, there are so many ritual texts practicing Guru Rinpoche, you know, practicing teacher, you know. But I think seven line prayers and Bhajar Guru Mantra is the most popular everyone using because short, huh? So to pray Guru Rinpoche extensively, then Liu Duma, you know, the seven chapters, which is 40, 50 pages, is not easy to chant everyone in every single day. Then the middle one is the seven line prayers to practice or to pray to Guru Mbuche. Then the shortest one is the Bhagavad Guru Mantra. And seven line prayers, it served like um, after Buddha in India, Buddhism got trouble, you know, from the non-Buddhist uh, destroying the temple, you know destroying, uh, yeah, burning the Dharma books, you know, so when Buddhism got really big obstacles, then the Nalinda 
university. After Buddha, we got two big universities, Buddhist universities in India, you know. The main, the biggest one is Nalanda. And then second was the Bikram Shila. So all the Mahapanditas, Buddhist teachers, they were really worrying, you know, how we can preserve the Buddha Dharma because we got lots of enemy from outside. They are discussing. Then suddenly one Dakini came there. And this Dakini told the old Panditas, you know, Buddhist teachers that it won't be that easy to dispel the obstacles from outsider and preserve the Buddha Dharma. Instead of that, if you invite Guru Rinpoche, he will dispel all the obstacles and he will preserve the Buddha Dharma, you know. When Dakini give this advice to all the Mahapanditas in uh, Nalanda University, you know, then the Panditas told to this Dakini, we don't know Guru Rinpoche and we have no idea where he is and how we can invite him, how we can bring him here. Then Dakini stowed the seven line prayers to the Panditas that tomorrow you uh, put the offering things, you know, on the temple, like uh, flowers, incense, lamps, you know, and chant the seven line prayers. And I go and I will bring the Guru Mishi here. So we know this is Dakini's teaching. The seven line prayers, you know, comes from the Dakini. So Panditas did the same way. Next morning, uh, set the old offering things on the temple and everyone chanted this, how Dakini taught them, you know. And then Guru Mishi came there from the sky. Then Guru Mishi uh, did many, many miraculous activities to destroy the obstacles and save the Buddha Dharma. This is the history of the seven line prayers. So in Tibetan words we say Kandu Kalang Mayalva. Uh, the fresh placings of the Dakini mouth, you know, like a breath. So we believe they still carrying this chance, you know, these seven line prayers. So we consider this is very profound and carrying lots of blessings of Dakini. So this is one of the most popular prayers to pray to Guru Mbuche. Then the first five lines, it shows Guru Mbuche's life story. So when you understand who is Guru Mbuche, then you have, I think, stronger faith, you know. You trust, you believe more if you understand who is Guru Mbuche. Then the last two lines, Israel praying to Guru Mbuche. It is why important um, if you really know well about the Guru Mbuche, I think we can have more faith, you know, and we can practice strongly, I think. And if you don't know much about, oh, Guru Mbuche, Guru Mbuche, pray, 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 you know, then maybe not that enough to pray, huh? So first line, Urkin Yulgin Nupchang Sam, that's the perfection of the place where Guru Mbuche born in this world. Uh, you have translation, so they are... Um, on the northwest border of the country of Odiana. Um, 
Now this is in Pakistan, this place. During that time, I think it is a kingdom, you know, Oriana. So where Gurumbuche born. In Danakosha Lake, you know, Danakosha Ocean. Then there was different kinds of lotus flowers. And Guru Mbuche came out from the Amitabha's heart, from the Sukhavati, Dewajin. So Guru Mbuche is a heart emanation of Amitabha Buddha, speech emanation of the Avalokita Shora. During the regenerated time, what we call Kali Yuga, Guru Mbuchi came like um, incarnation from all the Buddhas actually, you know, what we say, uh, reincarnation of the past Buddhas. We chanted uh, like Tisum Sangye Guru Rinpoche, and Buddha of the three times, uh, Guru Rinpoche. So, reincarnation of the past Buddhas. Uh, and representative of the present Buddhas, and source of the future Buddhas, you know. That's why uh, how we say Buddha of the three times. So, from the Amitabha Buddha's heart, radiate nine peaks golden Vajra, which is marked with a letter syllable. Free, I think. Then this Vajra landed on the lotus flower at Danakosha Lake. Then this Vajra transformed into eight years boy who was Guru Mbache, Soketurche, lotus born, because Vajra landed on the lotus and transformed into the Guru Mbache. So lotus born Guru, that's just like a metaphor. It's not actually, you know, comes from lotus. It comes from Amitabha Buddha's heart. So that's the perfect place of the Guru Mbache's birth, we can use the Nupchan Sam. Like no father and no mother, miraculous born. In Buddhist point of view, we have different births, huh? like birth from, born from the eggs, born from the like mother wombs, you know, and miraculous born, and born from heat and moisture, so this is miraculous born. There are a short history like uh, oh, Guru Mbuchi was born from the fam uh, father and mothers, you know, like, and uh, he was born in the prince Akama. You know, we have three different teachings, you know, in Yingma school. Kama teaching, Terma teaching, and Samu Taknangi Kupa, profound, pure vision teachings, you know, we, Nyingma, uh, explains in three groups of the teachings. So some Kama teachings explain that uh, Guru Mbche had father, mother, you know, but that's very rare. Uh, majority, especially Terma, Chesu teachings lineage, it comes all that Guru Mbuchi was born miraculously. Uh, even he said, you know, when people went to see him on the lotus flower, teaching to the Dakinis, wisdom Dakinis, asked, you know, who is your father and mother, who you are, you know. 
And then Gurumchi answered, I don't have any father and mother. I'm a sleep arising Buddha. So that's the majority. What we believe he was miraculously born. Came from the Amitabha Buddha's heart as a nine peaks burger. When this burger landed on lot of flowers, then transformed into eight years age of Guru Mbuche. So that time, Tsoggi Doje, Lotus Pond, Guru. Utkyan Yulgi Nubjang Sam. So now this is in Pakistan. Before that time, Oriana. Then it was in, I think, Afghanistan, Sawat. But now it is in Pakistan. Some lamas went to pilgrimage there. Uh, it's not easy, but some go there. And now, uh, no people, I think, that area. Even historically, yes, Guru Mbuchi gave the last of teaching and everyone is enlightened, you know. No beings are there. And now I think empty place, but we still can visit as a pilgrimage, you know. So this shows where Guru Mbuchi was born the perfection of the place. And then second one, Pema Kesar Tungbula, in the fallen heart of a lotus, it shows the excellent time when Guru Mche was born. I don't think we really can calculate how many years back, you know, uh, exactly. It's quite long ago. Uh, but through the teachings, what do we know that? Telo tel de tsechu, the tenth day of the sixth month, and monkey year. Uh, so every tenth is a Guru Mishya holiday, according to Luna Kilenthal. But tenth of the sixth month, I think people consider the main month when he was born, you know, and um, monkey. So that's why in many places in my school practice Guru Mbuche Tsichu. Uh, every month we practice the tender, but I think sixth month, tenth day is uh, more ex extensively trying to do more. But in Tibet, uh, our Payul is different, okay. Payul Great Sechu Chimu is on 5th month, 10th day. Uh, Kato is a 6th month, 10th day, because these two monasteries are quite close, geographically. So if same month you do this, then people will not have chance to visit, you know, which one you go, you know. So I think that's why, like, even Holiness was telling me that we Payul celebrate Fifth month, tenth day, the sixth month, tenth is Katok. These two monastery is quite close. Katok, Dzogchen, Payul, in Tibet, you know. So I think that's why to give the chance to people can visit both places, you know. One month is here and next month is there. I think that way. But uh, most of Nyingmapa monasteries celebrate, I think, sixth month. Tenth, uh. mm. so which year, how many years back, then it's uh, a little complicated. Um, then we need to think Buddha's prediction, you know, Buddha made prediction about the Guru Rinpoche when he was uh, taking Mahapuri Nirvana when he was uh, pass away, Buddha. Uh, we did in this drama movie also, you know, you know, I played Guru Mbuchi role. Uh, at the age of 82, Shakyamuni Buddha was taking Mahapuri Nirvana at Kushinagar in India. 
Then some of his students, Buddha's students, requested Buddha that, Buddha, you don't pass away. Remain here. If Buddha, you passed away, then who take care of us? You know, who teaches our Dharma? We have no teacher then, you know. When Buddha's disciple, student, Vidyadhara, requested this to Shakyamuni Buddha, and then in Mahapuri Nirvana Sutra quotation, uh, Ngani nyangen deo tu loni ke tang singina. Dana koshe choling do ngale lao pi ki There are a few different interpretations, you know, even, even different quotes, quotations. But Mahapuri Nirvana Sutra, Tao Dwai Shakyamuni Buddha, you know, last time, just before he passing away. Uh, Buddha was uh, telling to students, you don't need to worry, even I pass away. After eight plus four, what will be translated into Tibetan? Eight plus four is a, after 12 years of Buddha passed away, okay? Eight plus four is a 12, huh? Eight plus four. Uh, after my passed away in 12 years, at Danakosha Lake, um, even superior than me, the teacher will come and he will take care of you. He will teach the Buddha Dharma. So no need to worry. Shakyamuni Buddha said this, you know. Then his students had some doubt, you know. So far, what we know is Buddha is the best teacher, you know, most important teacher, you know, and highest teacher. But today Buddha is saying that someone will come who is even superior than him. Maybe this is just, he's trying to uh, convince us, don't worry, you know, but it should not be true, you know. Students thought that way. Buddha knows everyone's mind, huh? Then Buddha thought, oh, I taught them, I told them truth, but they didn't believe, you know. So now I need to explain them. It is truth. Nale lakpe kibuchum. In Tibetan now, but they translated from Sanskrit, you know. Nale lakpe kibuchum. Even superior than me, that wing, that great guy will come, you know. So, Buddha explained in details to convince the students. So, the first, as we know, Shakyamuni Buddha had parents, huh? father King Suddhodana, mother Maya Devi. Buddha was born from the Yegi uh, from the right rib, you know, born from here, from mothers, but still had the mother. Uh, so Guru Mbuche did not have father and mother, just came out from the Amitabha's heart. That's one difference Buddha taught to the students, you know. Even how we took birth is not the same. I had parents and he will born miraculously without any father and mother. That's one difference He's superior than me because of this, how we take birth. And this is very important, especially for Nyingma, you know, to understand. 
if I say or someone say, maybe, hey, it's not that big deal. Huh? If Buddha said, then all Buddhists should believe, huh? Buddha said. So it is exists in Mahapuri Nirvana Sutra. So first difference is between Nirmana Kaya Buddha Shakyamuni and Guru Rinpoche, you know, like, how was they born? Then the second, we have many different interpretations, you know, how Buddha enlightened. But common way, uh, Buddha enlightened at Buddha Gaya uh, when he was age of 36. Like till age of 29. Siddhartha Gautam, he was like a prince, you know, uh, in the palace. Uh, then when he was age of 29, he left the palace and went to many different levels of the practices and finally, age of 36, enlightened how we explain, how we understand, common Buddhist way, okay. Uh, but if you think different levels, then different explanation, okay. Mahayana way, Vajrayana way, even Vajrayana, outer Vajrayana, in, inner Vajrayana, there are many different explanations. But commonly we say, Buddha was enlightened when he was age of 36. Especially according to Theravadan, uh, Hinayana point of view. How he left the palace, I think good to know that uh, Gautam, Gautama, Siddhartha, Prince Siddhartha. Um, when Buddha was born, his father, King Suddhodana, invited many Rishis, Rishis mean Hindu saint, you know, Hindus like uh, masters to asking, can you see future of my son, what he will be, how he will be, you know. The most of young Hindu Rishis says, oh, he will be like, uh, universal kings, you know, and something, something. But the one old Rishi, when he saw the Prince Siddhartha, Gautam, he just cried. And King Suddhodana, father of Gautama, worried, you know, oh, you are crying. My son will have any problems, you know? What is the difficulties? Then this old Rishi said to the king, no, you don't have any problems about your son. But whatever prediction made the previous young Rishis is wrong, it's a mistake. This is Degenerated time, Kali Yuga. We cannot have universal king, universal monarchy. They all made wrong prediction. Then king asked, then what do you want to say? He says, I feel really sad, you know. I'm an old man. One day, your son will leave the place practice the religion, and he will become Buddha. And he will show how to get peace or happiness, you know. But I won't be alive that time. I will die before that. That's why I feel petty and sad. That's why I'm crying. Then the king Sododana, father of Buddha, asked, 
why he will leave the palace, you know, because king once met him, his successor, you know, next king. Then this old Indian Rishi told to the king, he will see four main suffering of the human beings. Then he will leave the palace. So because of that, you know, King Suddhodana, don't let him go out and see outer world, you know, because he was worrying he maybe run away one day, you know, he wants to make king. So all the good things put in front of him, you know, to make him happy. So he will be staying in the palace and I want to make him my successor, next king, huh? Uh, then when Gautama was age of 29, the time came, you know, to leave the palace. So, in his house, I think maybe four doors towards the four directions. So he see four sufferings through the four doors, you know, like uh, taking birth, you know, giving birth. Also suffering are not easy. <laughs> we forget how we, we were born, huh? now we are adult, young, so we don't remember how difficulty we went through when we were born, huh? but actually Giving birth or taking birth is not that pleasant thing, huh? It's a really painful, huh? So Buddha saw from the own, from the door that someone is giving birth, you know, shouting. And Buddha asked, why? Oh, this giving birth or taking birth. So Buddha thinks, oh, that's not a very good thing, you know. <laughs> and then, when he was watching from the next door to the out, uh, he saw old men walking with a stick, huh? difficult way. Then Gautama asked, we all are like strong, you know, very straight, you know. Why he's like a band and taking stick, you know. Why he walks like that, why he cannot walk like us, you know, then answer that. Now he got old, and we all will be same like that in the future after some years. Also suffering, suffering of the aging. And then when he was watching from the third door, then someone shouting, crying because of the pain, got sick, huh? So, birth, aging, sickness, huh? third suffering. And then when he was watching from the fourth road, so dead body was carrying to the channel ground, you know, uh, Indian system that time, you know, like uh, four people, two in the front, two in the back, and on the wood, put the body, you know, and carrying. <laughs> Why he's not walking by himself? Why four people carrying him, you know? Then, oh, he's died. And we all die one day. Then, uh, Gautama, Prince Siddhartha, thought that, oh, life is not that uh, quite joyful. You know, taking birth is a suffering. Aging, also suffering. Then getting sick, also suffering. And then has to die at the end. So if we are not free from these four great sufferings, then what is the point to live the life? You know? Then he thought, I will try to find, def defeat these four sufferings, you know, and escape from these four great sufferings. 
So he chanted four lines and ran away from the place. King's palace, you know, like Katang Natang Chiwasum, Kaldi Disum Yemina, Takyang Shindu Yombe, Yulnam Lani Jimiji. Like he was already born, huh? so after birth, if there is no getting aged, no sickness, no death, then I also like to enjoy this worldly happiness, you know, like what we called good food, good clothes, good house, you know, like I also like to enjoy these objects, you know. If there is no need to face these sufferings, I will enjoy in the palace, you know. But what is the point? One day we need to go all this through the different sufferings then. Then he left. Prince Siddhartha, trying to find the ultimate peace, you know, liberation, moksha. So this shows that common Buddhist point of view, then he practiced and become the Buddha. It shows like that. Uh, but ultimate meaning is not like that. Uh, Gautama also, Gautama also Buddha, you know, he was just displaying how to become the Buddha. If you think Mahayana point of view and Vajrayana point of view, that's just 12 different activities, you know, uh, to show the people how one can become the Buddha to just give the example. But common Buddhist point of view, that's the ultimate meaning, okay? He wasn't Buddha, he practiced and become the Buddha. But Guru Rinpoche, when he was born on the lotus flower in the Dhanakosha lake, uh, he was Buddha even that time. That's the second difference. Then five differences, okay, with the all manifest uh, uh, supreme manifestation Buddha, Nirmanakaya Buddha, and Guru Mbuche. Compare who? Shakyamuni Buddha did this, huh? <laughs> and then third, uh, Uh, teachings difference. Shakyamuni Buddha commonly teaches Sutrayana publicly, okay? Shakyamuni Buddha taught Vajrayana teachings, but secretly, not publicly, with his that body. Like first teachings in Varanasi Saranadi, you know, for noble truth. And then second teachings, Bulchor Peak, about the Pranya Paramita, perfection wisdom, you know. And third teachings in different places. This all up to Mahayana levels teaching. Theravadan to Mahayana. No Vajrayana teachings taught publicly by Shakyamuni Buddha. Even when he was giving Kala Chakra, empowerment with not same that physical body. He transformed into Buddha Kala Chakra and give the Vajrayana teachings, not as a Nirmanakaya Buddha. But Guru Mbuche gives all the different levels of teachings, Sutrayana, Mahayana, Vajrayana, you know, publicly. So that also differences. Guru Mbuche teaches all different levels of teachings, you know. Hinayana, Mahayana, Bajrayana, all publicly. It's a third difference. Uh, very important to know. And fourth, displaying activities. Also different. Shakyamuni Buddha. Mostly 
perform the activities peacefully, you know, as a monk, you know, shaped the hair, no shoes, <laughs> carrying ball, you know, with three ropes, peacefully. Um, as Vajrayana, we talked, you know, like four activities, pacifying, increasing, and empower means, and wrathful, you know, four activities like. Shakyamuni Buddha was displaying mostly peaceful activities, you know, to pacify, to purify the negativities, you know. But Guru Mbache, according to the needs, he can show different activities, you know, like a peaceful as well as wrathful, if tells peaceful way and not listening, then he will transform into wrathful form, you know, like a Guru Singitato, Guru Dorje Tolo, you know, blazing fires, you know. So differences even in the Dharma activities. Guru Mbuche can perform all the four different activities. But Shakyamuni Buddha, it does not mean he cannot do that, but mainly he performs peaceful way, all the activities. So that's the four differences. It's all in the Sutra, Shakyamuni Buddha explained, you know. And the fifth, Shakyamuni Buddha, when he was age of 82, he showed that he's passing away from this world, huh? Ultimately, in reality, Buddha doesn't need to pass away. In Mahayana teaching says, ah, Buddha will not die. Dharma will not disappear. You know? We say like a Shakyamuni Buddha's teachings, how many years? Then there are many different explanations, interpretations, you know. Some teaching says 5,000, some says 3,000, you know, some says 1,500, you know. This all conventionally and especially um, Binaya. Binaya teachings. It is talking about the Vinaya teachings. Common way is there Buddhism exists or not, how we say, is there monks or nuns or not, you know. If there are monks and nuns practicing Vinaya, then we consider they are Buddha Dharma. But Vajrayana will not disappear, even not in this human world, in the pure lens. The Vidyadharas, wisdom holder practitioners, will always keep practicing Vajrayana. So we don't talk about that, does exist or not about the Buddha Dhamma. Talking about the Buddha Dhamma, how many years, this all considered with the Vinaya, monks and nuns tradition, you know. Um, so I came out this like, Buddha will not die, Dharma will not disappear, you know, quotation, Mahayana, you know. So... Dharma, which level of Dharma, you know? Uh, mainly Vinaya will disappear from this soul in certain, after certain time. Uh, but uh, Vajrayana teachings still will, uh, Dakinis, Dhaka, Vidyadharas, they will still keep practicing in the pure land. So we will not disappear that. So Buddha passed away, age of 82, to, to convince the Sentient beings, especially human beings, you know, that life is impermanent. I'm Buddha, I'm still dying. If you are just normal, then you will definitely will die. So why you don't practice the Dharma, you know? To say, to teach this, he display dying from this world. Buddha is the highest teacher, you know, no need to die actually. <laughs> it's just to teach us 
impermanence of life. Because it's very important if you really think you're a Buddhist, then we really need to remember the that huh? impermanence of life. Because if we remember, I will die one day, then we will not dare to do wrong things. Huh? If I do something wrong, after death, I will suffer. You know? <laughs> and if I remember life is impermanent, we don't know when we'll die, then we will just trying to practice quickly. Huh? No guarantee how long I will live, you know. So it's very important about the impermanence of the life, you know. To teach this then Buddha in the age of 82, showing that he is passing away. But Guru Mbuche, no need to die. Because he practiced uh, in Marutika cave in Nepal um, took Mandarawa as uh, his um, practitioner friend you can say that way I think uh, practiced the long life in Marutika cave then Buddha Amitayu came forth and give the empowerment to Guru Mbuche and Mandarawa made him immortality, no need to die. So that also differences, you know. With these five differences, Buddha told his student that Guru Mbuche is even superior than me because of these five reasons, you know. It's in Sutra, Mahayana, Mahaparinirvana Sutra. Ah, good to know because then we will know, you know, who is Guru Rinpoche. Ah, who, which Buddha we are practicing, you know. Ah, like Holiness was telling us that when we did Guru Rinpoche live story drama, then he was keep telling us. You really need to perform this well, you know. Everyone, like we are 60, 70 monks, did like a six months work, you know. Because some people think that Guru Rinpoche is like a old lama from the, some different villages, you know, like a, born as a human and learn how to read alphabet like Kaka Ganga and maybe receive little teachings and practice few months in the cave and become Guru Rinpoche, you know. Is it not like that? He is Buddha from the birth. To tell people we need to do this really skillful way, you know, he was really emphasizing us. Because if we know who is Guru Rinpoche, what kind of Buddha he is, we strongly follow him. Huh? We have, I think, uh, uh, maybe great, greater faith than, you know. <laughs> if we don't know him, oh Guru Rinpoche, oh Guru Rinpoche, oh Guru Rinpoche, I don't know, Guru Rinpoche will see or not me. Huh? I'm just shouting here, I don't know, he knows or doesn't know, you know. <laughs> and not enough faith, no blessings, huh? No faith, no blessings in Vajrayana. <laughs> so in Vajrayana practice, the belief, the trust, the faith, is the, like a ground, you know, it's like a foundation. Without foundation, you cannot build the house. Huh? Similar, no faith, no belief, no trust. No matter how much you shouting, <laughs> chanting, may not, easy, may not get the blessings. Huh? So it's very important we should know what kind of Buddha is Guru Rinpoche, you know. Um, like in, in Kun Sang Lame Shalom, the word of my public teacher, there we have the quotation, you know, like, Lama kushi kangrila meku chingi ma masharna chilapti chudin me pape sem meku de la nenden ze 
it was telling like how you can really get the blessings from the teacher, you know. So put the metaphor, you know, like uh, lamas for different kayas, like different bodies, you know. It's like snow mountain. Uh, to melt the snow and get the water, you have to have raised the sun. Huh? If sunrise, heat goes to the mountain, then snow melts and you can get the water. That's like a metaphor, yeah, example. But the meaning, how you get the blessings from the teacher, you know. If you don't raise the faith of the sun, then you will not make prayer, yeah? And how you can get the blessings from the teacher, like if no sun, snow will not melt. Huh? If no melt, then it won't be water and coming down similar. Then it says, same de la the faith emphasize, you know, always trying to generate the faith towards your guru, you know. So in Nyingma, we practice guru mostly inseparable with Guru Rinpoche, huh? like form is a Guru Rinpoche, and meaning is one's own root teacher, you know, uh, inseparable way, in, in inseparable form, like guru and root teacher. It's very important in Vajrayana, you know, you like visualize only like a Vajrasattva, and you think, oh, Vajar Sato is very important. My guru, my root teacher, I don't know where is he, you know. Oh, Vajar Sato has more blessing. Oh, Vajar Sato Samaya Manopalai. Not remembering root guru. No way, no bridge. You need to cross the river, then you need to use the bridge. Huh? You need to get the blessings. The bridge is like a, like a bridge, it's a teacher. Blessings come from the teacher, you know. So, um, no matter which deity you practice, inseparable with your root teacher. That's the Vajrayana's most important idea, you know. Like in Vajrayana we talk three roots, huh? common Buddhist way we say like uh, three jewels, you know, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. But in Vajrayana, teacher, meditational deities and Dakini, you know. No matter you visualize as a Meditational deities or guru or dakini, always inseparable with one's root teacher. And not only root teacher, man is root teacher, as well all lineage masters, including, you know. Otherwise, no bridge, then somewhere cannot cross, maybe fall into the water. So, this also, through the faith. Faith, faith is very important. Like essence, practice of the Hinayana, Theravada, is a renunciation, number one. Without renunciation, no way to practice Theravada. The essence, practice of the Mahayana is a compassion. Without compassion, no Mahayana practice. Why? Without compassion, you can never generate the bodhicitta. Without associate practice of the bodhicitta, there is no mayana practice. So heart of the practice of the mayana is a compassion. Then, the heart practice of the Vajrayana is a pure perception. Taknang, what do we call? Taknang. So trying to perceive everything as a pure, you know. Whatever our master's activities. Maybe my eye is not that very sharp, you know. Whatever he or she did, excellent. Maybe I saw wrong way, you know. My eyes has problem. Whatever we hear, oh, he or she said 
excellent way. My ear maybe got some dust, you know. <laughs> so that way we are trying to look, trying to see purely. That's the Vajrayana practice, you know. Uh, like when we do generation practices and at the end, then completion practices, then like, oh, even the post-meditative state, go, think, look, watch. Similarly, when you are in the meditation, you know. So you are like practicing Guru Rinpoche, like Rikjan Tipa. Then at the end, when you dedicate and go out, you know, whatever forms appears, see as a Guru Rinpoche. Whatever sounds you hear, Thing as a Bajra Guru Mantra, you know, and whatever thoughts comes, trying to transform into the wisdom, then all the problems solved. Whatever forms appears, if we think Guru Mbuche, then what is the argument? We don't fight with the Guru Mbuche. Huh? Oh, he, oh, she, he's watching me wrong way, you know. Oh, she's looking me something different way. Oh, I'm going to take her revenge, you know. Then starting to the fighting. Huh? If we see, oh, this is Ishisokyal. Oh, this is Mendarawa. This is Avalokiteshwara. Who fight with Mendarawa? No need to fight. Huh? Problem solved. And similarly, when we say pure vision, whatever we hear, oh, Bajar Guru Mantra, Mani Mantra, and we don't care what people say, oh, chanting money, chanting Bazar Guru. <laughs> Otherwise, oh, you speak so rude way me, you know. You know who am I? How you can speak me like that? <laughs> then we're starting to start the fighting. Huh? <laughs> so pure vision means like that. So trying to perceive everything as a pure, you know. <laughs> Maybe they have some mistake. That's their headache, you know. For their headache, we don't need to buy the medicine. We need to buy medicine for our headache, you know. Uh, so if we can solve all the problems this way, then no matter where you are in samsara or nirvana, it doesn't bother you, yeah? So, Vajrayana, man practice is pure vision, trying to perceive everything purely, you know. So, like I was a little bit elaborating, if we understand Guru Mbuche more, we will have more faith, you know, in Him, and we will get the blessings from Him, you know. So from that point then, even our teachers, you know, our practices, way of thinking, Uh, no matter you practice Theravada or Hinayana or Mahayana or Bajrayana, the wish is trying to solve the problems, you know, different techniques. And it all has same um, technique, theory. If you have really genuine renunciation, you still not make much problems, huh? Renunciation, renunciation, huh? We don't fight for food or clothes if you really have the renunciation, huh? And similarly, if you really have good compassion, and then out of compassion, you still will not fight, huh? And similarly, you, if you have pure vision, trying to see all the deities, you know, Dakinis, Gurus, meditation deities, and still similar. Problem is solved. Different techniques, different theories, but same destination, huh? same kind of purpose. All the Buddha Dharma is meant to be that. Huh? Dharma, Dharma. We don't practice Dharma to become healthy, 
wealthy and, and I think more attractive. We don't do Dharma practice for that, huh? Why we practice the Dharma? To change our heart. Dharma is a uh, Sanskrit, yeah? Tibetan is a Chu. We say Chu. Dharma translated into Tibetan, Chu. The meaning of the Chu, the word of the Chu, what does it mean? It means fix. It means repair. Like if my watch goes out of order, I go to somewhere to fix my watch. Huh? Then again it will show me the time. If it is out of order, it will not show me the time. Similar, we practice the Dharma to change our heart, to fix our uh, wrong mind. Dharma, that's the meaning, fix, repair. What need to fix? Our mind is not working right way. Like anger, you know, desire, ignorance, jealousy, you know, pride. We have that sort of problems in our mind. So Dharma is a medicine to fix those all the disease, you know. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> generally we are talking to Guru Rinpoche, but sometimes uh, So second line was like, Yam Zen Chok, Ujing Yun, Pema Gaza, Yam Zen Chok Yung Mutup Nye. You attain the most marvelous spiritual accomplishment. That's like an excellent Dharma. What Guru Mbuchi realized, you know, what realization he has is the uh, perfection of Dharma, like a perfection of place, time, teachings, and uh, teachers, and read new, you know, five perfections. So all the Vajrayana teachings explain with that way, you know, from where it comes from. So uh, the realization what Guru Rinpoche has is the marvelous and Yamchen uh, choking to me like he accomplished uh, accomplishment of the supreme accomplishment, you know, through his teachings. Then the fourth line is a perfect teachers, renowned as the lotus born, Pema Jhune Shesuda. Pema Sambhava. Sambhava is a slave arising, you know. Sambhuva. Sambhuva is a slave arising. Uh, lotus born Buddha. And the fifth, Kortu Kandu Mangpekur. You are sounded by a retinue of many darkness. This is talking time of the birth, okay? When Guru Mbuche born on the lotus flower, even that moment, he was teaching many dakinis, wisdom dakinis, uh, in Dana Kosha Lake, uh, surrounded with many wisdom dakinis. Uh, so these five lines from whom Ujjain Yulgindu Changsam tell Kotu Kandu Mambikot. This tells the life story of the Guru Mbuche. So we can understand what kind of Buddha he was. So then once you know who is he, then you have, I think, stronger faith. Huh? Then the two lines is the real prayer. Keki Jesu Takdukji. As I practice following in your food steps,
like I practice the Dhamma, how you did do, you know, how you practice the Dhamma. Jinji uh, Lapjit Sheikh Susol. Pray, come forth, and grant your blessing. These two lines is the main prayer. Before five lines is our understanding his life history. Uh, even he was Buddha from the time of birth, he received many, many teachings from the different masters. And he practiced many, many plays, long, long time. Actually, he doesn't need that. He's Buddha from the birth. Why need to receive the teachings? Why need to practice the Dharma? Just to teach us, you know. Set the example. If you really want to become Buddha, this is the way how we practice the Dharma. Follow the teachers, receive the teachings, practice the Dharma. So many teachers Guru Mbuche has. Um, because even in his time, it's better than now, huh? <laughs> Guru Mbuche's time. Um, like Buddha said, after his passing away, 12 years, Guru Mbuchi will born. Huh? So it means more than 2,500 years ago. So I think better than now, time, you know. Even his time, people are talking to him, who is your teaching, from where you receive the teachings, what kind of practice you have, you know, to clarify that kind of doubts. doubts. He display receiving teachings from the many teachers and practicing many places, you know, like a, a ad manifestation of the Guru Mbuchya and Guru Shakya Singh. It's a, it's a monk's form, receiving even monk's vows, you know, and receiving many, many empowerments because Buddha Dharma, we don't practice without any lineage. Buddha Dharma, we practice receiving lineage from the masters, you know. That's why he display all these different activities, you know. Uh, many, many charnel grounds in Nepal, Bhutan, India, you can, in Tibet, you can see many, many caves, uh, Guru Mbuche cave, Guru Mbuche made retreat here, you know. It is not like he wants to be Bajar master, so he went to retreat, you know, in the forest or in the cave, you know. That's all to tell us this is the way to practice the Dharma. Otherwise, he's Buddha from the time of uh, birth. <laughs> then why he needs to go so many caves to practice, <laughs> to waste the time, no? Huh? <laughs> So, this all to teach us how to practice the Buddha Dharma. Like uh, Theravadan teachings, Mahayana teachings, except uh, monks and nuns uh, discipline. You can read the books or you can practice if you understand the meaning. Not have to have loom, you know. There's no one in Theravadan and Mayana. But there is a loom, you know, reading transmission. It is good if you have the reading transmission loom. But if you don't have the reading transmission, still you can read and practice. Theravadan practice and Mayana practice, you know. But Vajrayana practice is not like that. You have to have wang, you have to have lung and tea, instructions. Then only you are like qualified, you know, you got the permission. It's a little difference, you know. Mm. 
三万英布，三万英布 is the main text explain about the Nyingma Pass Way. Ah,、uh, so it says, Lopen Nye Par Macheshin, Wang Nam To Par Mache Par. Nyemba lasok semba nam dewu mejing lak perjur four lines on shulukas one stanzas you know not pleasing the budget master not receiving the empowerments if you are trying to listen contemplating meditation no fruition no result. Not only not having result and fruition, it will destroy you. You know. <laughs> so, Bajajana point of view, then, Wang is a very important, Lung also very important. Then trying to understand the meaning, then trying to practice the that teachings. You know. That's why difference. Refuge prayers like common way we say、ah, Buddha Saranam Gachimi, Dharma Saranam Gachimi, Sangam Saranam Gachimi. I take refuge in Buddha. I take refuge in Dharma, and I take refuge in Sangha. When it goes to Vajrayana, then La Mala Kapsung Chio. Yeah, I take refuge in Guru. Even before then, Buddha. Some may say, "Oh, this is Tibetan lamas made up." You know, they want to take refuge in them. That's why lama la yaps chiu. It comes from Buddha's teaching. You know, like even in Sanskrit, namu guru ve, namu Buddha ya, namu Dharma ya, namu Sangha ya. Different levels of teaching, ah,、uh. common yes, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, three jewels. But in Vajrayana, then take refuge in Guru even before then Buddha, Lama la kya sunchiyo, then Sangha la. Why? Why it is so important Guru? Then even Buddha, you know, before then Buddha. Without root teacher, no way to practice there in Vajrayana, because we cannot receive wang from Guru Rinpoche, we cannot receive wang from Shakyamuni Buddha. Then from whom we get the empowerments from our root master, and we cannot receive the loom from Manjushri or Vajrapani or Avalokiteshwara. We need to receive the loom reading transmission from our root master, from our guru. So that's why in Vajrayana, guru is so important because without empowerment, you cannot chant that. You know, you're not supposed to chant that. Yeah. After receiving empowerment, you are permitted. You know, you got the permission to chant that. So that's why, is a root master is a very important in 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 Vajrayana. Otherwise, we cannot practice. We are not in, even supposed to chant. If right environment, right situation, then Wang, Lung, T, pointing out instruction, all we get from our teachers. That's why teacher is so important. We chant like, "Yun dun sangye kun nam yam na yang katin sangye kun le lagbe guns." Quality wise, maybe my master is same like a Buddha, but kindness way, he's more important than Buddha because <laughs> we are receiving all teachings from him. Ah,、huh? that's why why we need to pray to our root masters, you know.
and then same, same again. Again, it comes to the faith. If you, you don't have the faith, no matter how many times you say, Lama Chen, Lama Chen, Lama Chen, you know, just <laughs> having pain <laughs> at the lips or mouth, you know, no blessings. We need to do this from the heart. So that we should have the right motivation, chain in faith. Uh, So this seven line verse is a very important why. It is not that extensive, like a seven chapters, prayer to Guru Mbuche, Liu Tuma. Our 40, 50 pages cannot make that much. But this is quite short, you know, only seven lines. And it carries a lot of blessings, you know, Dakinis. Like when they were chanting this, then Guru Mbuche came there, destroy all the obstacles, you know, and save the Buddha Dharma. And we also want to receive blessings from Guru Rinpoche, huh? especially in this difficult time. Uh, actually, in the teaching says, uh, did not change the time. <laughs> Change the people thinking, you know. Dunam manjur, minam When we change way of thinking from positive to negative, then time uh, comes not very uh, good way. Yeah? Uh, like Guru Mishra explained, you know, in the degenerative time, there will be so many problems like a disease. Even doctor cannot find out what kind of disease. Why? Because of people's negative karma, you know. We didn't have any medicine for COVID like Guru Mishra explained long back ago. <laughs> So this is why important to understand Guru Mbuche and pray him because doing his earlier time, like he had the attitude and motivation and prayer that when no Buddhas, no Bodhisattvas, blessings reach to the sentient beings, I will work for them, you know, like, I should be blessed for that difficult time, you know. So if we really pray from the heart, then Guru Mbuche promised he will take care of us, you know. It is only problem we are not having enough faith. That's why we are not getting enough blessings. <laughs> Even Buddha taught yeah, in Uttara Tandara that how we can get the Buddha's blessing. He give uh, Uttara Tandra is a matria, you know, how we can, can get the blessings from the Buddha. So he put so many metaphors, examples there. Like, like if mirror is not clean, lots of dust, no matter how beautiful face you show on that mirror, your reflection will not see in the mirror because full of dust. Huh? <laughs> Similarly, like Buddha's, Guru Mbuche's teachers has lots of blessings, compassion, wisdom. To get their blessings, we should have pure heart, huh? like a clean mirror. <laughs> if mirror is clean, then can see the reflection. Huh? So likewise, if we have really enough faith, good heart, then possible to get the blessings. Similar like in Uttaratandra, like to have the uh, picture or reflection of the sun and moon in the fount, water pound. Water should be clean, you know, if full of the dust. You know, then we cannot see the reflection of the sun and moon. If water is clean, 
in the pound. Then all the reflection of sun and moon can see us similarly. So we should have enough faith to really get the blessings, to really dispel the obstacles. Uh, interdependent uh, in Buddhist belief, uh, interdependent and, and like a karma, so should be accordingly everything. <clears throat> Choose a castle for the deal. Eh. Elas. Guru Mbuche said, you know, himself in, in Katang, Pema Katang Live Street, Guru Mbuche, we say, Depa Chenji, Kang Sak Pomola, Pejung, Kang Duang Mashu, Kornali, Nai Tsela, Dedung Yuma, in Teden Miri, you know, Penjung, four lines, you know. So, the who has the inner faith, no matter male or female, I, Pema Juni, always sleep on their door, you know. I'm always there at their door. Guru Mbuche never went to anywhere in front of you there. I don't need to die, you know, he said. I don't need to die. No need to die. If you have enough faith in front of the each person, one Guru Rinpoche will be there. That's his promise, huh? He take care of us. But we also need to have enough faith, belief, trust, praying. Um, so sometimes we normal people think that Oh, I was chanting Bajar Guru Mantra. Every day I offer the lambs, incense, flowers. I even offer the prostration. But I'm always in, in suffering, you know. Why? Guru Mbuchi didn't see me, you know. Similarly, Buddha didn't see me. Buddha doesn't know, you know, what I'm doing. Oh, I don't think the karma is really true, you know. <laughs> So that's the like quite negative thoughts, you know, in the world of my puppet teacher, it says that it's a is a is a then wrong view, you know. <laughs> not believing, ah, uh, I don't know. Buddha will take care of me or not, you know. I don't know Guru Mbuchi will see me or not, you know. That's the worst wrong view. And wrong view is the Worst negative karma from the ten negative karma, yeah? Wrong view. Because if you really generated wrong view, you have no left any single vows. It will destroy everything. No foundation, you know, then. Um, in the teaching says, like, among the ten non virtues, the heaviest is the wrong view, you know. <laughs> the, uh, so it's really important that <laughs> we have right view in Guru Mbuchi, three jewels, you know, that my faith is not enough, otherwise, Guru Mbuchi will be there always. We should have that understanding. Otherwise, like Holiness was telling us, people think Guru Mbuchi is an old Lama, learned the Alphabad and retreat few months in somewhere, came and become Lama. It's not that. He is Buddha. We need to explain. We need to show, you know, what kind of Buddha he was. So that's, we are, 
we are quite fortunate that okay in this life we were able to uh, pray Guru Mbuche, trying to understand Guru Mbuche, trying to practice Guru Mbuche, you know, that's our very uh, fortunate. But still, we do have enough requirements within us to really get the blessings or maybe uh, realizations, you know, through the blessings. Because uh, in Nyingma, root of the blessing is a teacher practice. Jilab Gita wa Lama. And if you need to get accomplishment, Siddhi, then you need to practice meditational radius. Ngutu Gita wa Yidam. The source of the accomplishment is meditational radius. Parchesel wa Kandu Chayung in order to dispel the obstacles, then you need to practice the Dakini and even Dharma protectors, especially Vajrayana way, in Nyingma way, like we first practice Ngandua, prayer many practices, to have uh, um, Right thoughts like Ngundu has to change our mind to make suitable to practice the Buddha Dharma. That's the Ngundu, yeah, primary practice. Then, when you get into the actual practice, then first we practice the Guru. Guru is Guru Mbuche, yeah, in Nyingma. Then, different meditational deities, different Dakinis, you know. So, this is how we practice the in my school. So why Guru is important? To get the blessings. If you get the blessings, you are fortunate, you know. You will accomplish whatever you desire, you like to have. No blessings, not very good luck. No matter how much you try, you won't get what you really wanted to get, you know. Because not enough karma. So, um, we met Guru Mbuche's Dharma, <laughs> Guru Mbuche's tradition, so we are very fortunate. And then important to utilize the opportunity. Don't waste the time, I think. So today we just speak this much, okay? And then trying to speak a little bit tomorrow. Uh, maybe my English is not that good to understand. Uh, just trying to my best, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Nambaje, <laughs> Sangeet and Bada Jenge Vasho, Sanje Tamje Tishenki Pasho, Indian Dance in the Chula Jupasho, Ranjan Dunye, Pindian Jupasho, Gewa Kundu Yanda Ramadan, Tarne Chuji Pala Longe Jess. Sada Lamji Yende Razone Doje Changi Gopanyo Tosho. And Jetsama has a dedication prayer here. Yeah, sure. By this effort, may all sentient beings be free of suffering. May their minds be filled with the nectar of virtue. In this way, may all causes resulting in suffering be extinguished. And only the light of compassion shine throughout the world. Thank you.
Thank you, Kimbala. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you.